Throughout the war in Ukraine, NATO has towed a delicate line, providing as many weapons to Ukraine as it can without triggering a direct reaction from Russia. However, with tensions between Russia and Lithuania rapidly escalating over Lithuania's trade blockade of Kaliningrad, an escalation looks worryingly likely. So, in this video, we're going to be explaining Lithuania's Kaliningrad embargo, why Russia is so mad about it, and whether it could lead to World War III. Before we start, a lot of our viewers don't actually know that we have other YouTube channels. You can find out much more news from us over our other channels, TLDR UK, US and Global. Subscribe to the ones you're interested in, or subscribe to all of them to get the most from TLDR. They're linked below. First things first, a little primer on Kaliningrad itself. Formerly the easternmost city of Germany prior to the Second World War, the Kaliningrad region was seized by the Red Army in 1945, and then ceded to the Soviet Union after the war. Physically sandwiched between Poland and Lithuania, Kaliningrad is a semi-enclave of the Russian Federation, i.e. territory of Russia with a sea border otherwise completely surrounded by territory of other states, notably Poland and Lithuania. Kaliningrad is part of Russia because when it was part of the Soviet Union, while it was administered by the Lithuanian Soviet Socialist Republic, the area was technically designated as part of the Russia-Soviet Federative Socialist Republic. This is probably because Stalin considered the area too strategically important to be left in the hands of another SSR. While it was the easternmost region of Germany, it is now the westernmost region of Russia. And the port city of Baltiitsk in the Oblast represents Russia's only warm water Baltic port that doesn't freeze over in winter. Kaliningrad also offers Russia a base from which to station and launch weapons directly into the heart of Western Europe. And Russia has allegedly deployed nuclear weapons on the territory. Obviously, for anything to move between Kaliningrad and the rest of Russia by road or rail, it must travel through another sovereign state, usually Lithuania. And on Saturday, Lithuania's state rail operator, LTG, announced that it would enforce a ban on transit of goods, subject to EU sanctions, moving from mainland Russia through Lithuania to Kaliningrad. It's worth noting that this wasn't an entirely unilateral decision. Lithuania are actually just applying EU sanctions from March. Kaliningrad has always been a bit of a grey zone, because you don't actually need a visa to travel from Russia to Kaliningrad through Lithuania if you're travelling by rail. But after consultation with the Commission, Lithuania apparently decided to impose the EU sanctions on the area. Almost immediately, Kaliningrad's governor, Anton Alekhanov, announced that he considered the move to be a most serious violation of the right to free transit in and out of Kaliningrad. According to Alekhanov, sanctions would affect about 50% of Kaliningrad's imports. To replace the shortfall, Alekhanov said that goods would be moved by cargo ferries and that Russia was seeking to ramp up ferry frequency throughout the rest of the year. The Kremlin's reaction was even more furious. The Kremlin spokesperson, Dmitry Peskov, described the embargo as, quote, a violation of everything, and Russia's foreign ministry surmounted Lithuania's charge d'affaires in Moscow to demand an immediate cancellation of the restrictions or face actions to defend Russia's national interest Russian state media argued that the moves were a violation of the 2002 joint statement by Russia and the European Union, which protects passengers of people between mainland Russia and Kaliningrad. In response, the Lithuanian foreign minister repeatedly stressed that Lithuania is just implementing pre-agreed EU sanctions, and the EU has insisted it's consistent with the 2002 joint statement because the sanctions only affect specific goods, not passenger travel. 
Somewhat unsurprisingly, this hasn't cut the mustard in Russia. On Tuesday, Russian state media called for a military response, and the Kremlin announced it was preparing, quote, retaliatory measures. Now, at time of writing, we don't know what these retaliatory measures will include. They're unlikely to include direct military action. As we see it, Russia is more likely to first resort to so-called hybrid warfare techniques, like cyber attacks or political interference, before actually putting troops on the ground. It's also worth noting that Russia has made similar threats in the past, which haven't amounted to much. Peskov said that Russia would have to rebalance the situation if Sweden and Finland were to join NATO. And Russia's foreign ministry spokeswoman, Maria Zakharova, warned of, quote, military and political consequences regarding Nordic accession. As you've probably noticed, these threats haven't come to much. Norway and Sweden are well on their way to NATO accession, and, save for a few flybys, Russia hasn't done much to stop it. If Russia does decide to take military action, however, it'll probably involve occupying the Suwalki Gap, a 104-kilometer-long strip of land along the Lithuanian-Poland border that connects Russia's Kaliningrad Oblast with Belarus. As we detailed in this video, this would put NATO in a difficult spot, not least because it would isolate the Baltic states, but also because Russia would deny it's a full-on invasion on the grounds they're only occupying the border, not actually advancing into a NATO state. So far, there have been sort of two reactions to this story. More hawkish observers have pointed out that Russia made similar threats against Sweden and Norway, which ultimately came to nothing and that Russia clearly doesn't have the capacity to fight a war against NATO, given that it's currently struggling in Ukraine. So we don't need to worry about upsetting the Kremlin. More dovish commentators have instead argued that this is a needless escalation that brings us one step closer to World War III. While it's true that Lithuania is just applying EU sanctions, it's not as if the expansion of sanctions to include Kaliningrad is going to have much material impact on Russia's war effort. And it's clear that the Kremlin considers this a threat to the territorial integrity of Kaliningrad. If they're not addressed, the escalating tensions around Kaliningrad could actually spiral into a wider NATO-Russia war, with potentially catastrophic consequences. So, which side are you on? Should the West treat these threats as blunders and continue applying maximum pressure on Moscow? Or is this a bit too close for comfort? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe to TLDR EU. Remember, you can get loads more from TLDR by going to our other channels, TLDR Daily, UK, US and Global. They're linked down below. Thanks for your support.